Good afternoon, everybody. I see cameras and microphones getting connected. Great to see you all coming in. And I give a few seconds just for the audio and everything to work. And for the number to go up, great. Good afternoon. Good afternoon and a, a warm welcome to the Financing Decent Work Clinics with a South-South uh, approach. It is great to see you all here. Uh, wonderful to see an interest in different African countries in this topic of uh, financing decent work. Lovely to see you. Um, and I see a couple more. Yes, you are all connected. Great. Um, welcome to these clinics. And um, let me start by saying that it's very good to see all this interest in this topic. Financing decent work is not the easiest topic. It's a complex topic. Don't worry, we do not expect you to come out of this course being complete finance specialist. But what we do aspire for is that in this course, you learn a little bit about the financing development wor world, how that works, how it is evolving. And hopefully you feel a little bit more confident to put your decent work objectives forward for financing in different financing mechanisms. And to achieve that, we've been working here as a team to put this course together. And let me straight away um, first introduce uh, the person who's going to opening, open this uh, webinar, which is Christophe Perrin, who is the director for Multilateral Partnerships and Development Cooperation in the ILO. Also, I would like to present uh, the two speakers that you are going to hear from later during this uh, webinar. First of all, Anita Amorim, who is the Head of Emerging and Special Partnerships at ILO Headquarters, and Duncan Chando, ILO Consultant, Development Specialist, and Expert on Social, um, on uh, South-South and Triangular Cooperation. Uh, you will get to know the rest of the team later uh, during this and the next webinars. But let us start and let me straight away hand over to Christophe Perrin, uh, Director of Multilateral Partnerships and Development Cooperation Department at the ILO. Uh, Christophe, it is great to have you here at this opening and uh, we'd love to hear from you, over. Thank you very much, Linda. Um, well, a warm welcome to everybody. It's, a, it's really a pleasure to, to be with you today. Uh, I, I've been asked to somehow set the scene of what I'm going to try to, to, to do right now. And I would like first uh, start by expressing uh, our appreciation for the, for the uh, investment that has been made in this, uh, in this training course for our, our African constituents in Ghana, Rwanda, Kenya, Zambia, and, and Malawi. Uh, this course will present a valuable opportunity for all of us to learn uh, and join thoughts together regarding financing architecture and mechanism. As Linda pointed out, this is, a, as we know, a fairly complex uh, uh, matter, but very much on the top of the, of the development agenda at the moment. Uh, the, the ILO team, which is composed of uh, hopefully from the uh, ITC, International Training Center in Turin, as well as colleagues from the uh, Enterprise Department and uh, my own department, Anita and her colleagues uh, from the Mutual Partnerships and Development Cooperation Department, has prepared a, 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 a fairly diverse program featuring key speakers, technical specialists, and most importantly, numerous opportunities to share experiences and lessons learned during lively and passive research. So this is very much the, the, the context of this series of, of webinars in the coming in the coming weeks. So the, the, the main objective of this course is to ensure that uh, you as participants representing ministries of labor, trade unions, employers, organizations, UN system and academia are equipped to effectively contribute to the development of national financing 
strategy. So we believe that uh, this objective is better achieved by building new networks to foster collaborative processes and sharing best the practices. And we are, we are particularly pleased with your agreement to uh, collect best practices on financing decent work and source of peer learning and share widely with all stakeholders present. This is very much part of, of this overall uh, exercise. So we, we are of course all committed to to the achievement, uh, to the objective of achieving decent work for all, especially in the context of the 230 agenda and the certain development goals. As you know, the 230 agenda and the goals are, are facing major challenges linked to the to the series of crises that we have been uh, uh, facing. There will be, and I will come back to that uh, in a couple of months from now, uh, 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 three or kind of midterm review, uh, an SDG summit in September in New York, where we will take stock uh, uh, regarding the, uh, the achievement of the SDGs. And, uh, and the, the question that we face, uh, 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 particularly in those times of, of, uh, of multiple crises, as I said, is how countries can uh, finance their national ambitions in terms of, of decent work. Uh, this call presents an excellent opportunity to hear from social actors, think tanks, different banks, and other stakeholders on constructive ways to achieve these goals with the goal, the global South playing a leading role in the in the response. We we have concluded that there is a need to massively increase funding from both national and international sources, including both public and private resources that may or may not be channeled via the UN system. Globally, as you know, there is a, a strong political commitment behind the Financing for Development Agenda. Uh, the ILO has been supporting the UN Secretary General's roadmap for financing the 230 Agenda for certain de development, uh, sustainable development, uh, recognizing the urgency of developing coordinated responses to enable ambitious financing solutions. Uh, he, uh, Secretary General Guterres, together with the Prime Ministers of Jamaica and, ja and uh, Canada, uh, have launched uh, an initiative in May 2020 on financing for development in the era of COVID-19 and beyond. We have been, um, as an ILO, as an organization as a whole, uh, been uh, heavily involved in this initiative with social protection and employment promotion as the main theme uh, uh, of our contribution. This is ensuring the global accelerator on jobs and social protection for just transitions which is an initiative aimed at supporting countries in their effort to create more jobs and social and protect and sorry and strengthen social protection systems. Uh, this accelerator has been launched by the Secretary General in September 2021, uh, with the ILO as the lead agency in response to the COVID pandemic, and which had had a significant impact on employment and social protection worldwide. And in that regard, both for financing decent work and in the context of the global accelerator, the ILO's approach is threefold. First of all, creating jobs, which is very much the, the, the starting point, I would say. Uh, and the initiative aims to promote inclusive economic growth and job creation, especially for vulnerable groups, such as women, youth, and persons with disability. It supports the development of policies and programs that can stimulate job creation, enhance the employability of workers, and promote entrepreneurship. Uh, countries can learn from each other on employment generation activities, especially while linking them up to financial and investment system for in the global south. Second point, strengthening social protection. Uh, this initiative aims to support countries in expanding and improving their social protection system, including social insurance, social assistance, and labor market program. It emphasizes the importance of providing adequate and effective social protection to all workers and their families, especially those in the informal economy. Social protection system can also evolve depending on what investment and decent work financing is provided for creating a healthy social protection ecosystem. Last but not least, promoting social dialogue. As you know, this is at the very core of the ILO's mandate and, and, and I would say operational model. This initiative aims to foster social dialogue among governments, employers, and workers' organizations to ensure that policies and programs related to employment and social protection are developed and implemented in a participatory and inclusive manner. It emphasizes the importance of building trust 
and cooperation among stakeholders to promote social and economic development. You may also be pro, uh, aware of uh, um, that as part of the uh, 230 ADG summit preparations to be held in September this year in New York, in February 2023, the US Secretary General launched an SDG stimulus package calling for a significant increase to the tune of more than 500 billion US dollars each year in extra financing for the world's most, from the world's most developed countries to meet the 230 agenda. This is of course a very ambitious uh, uh, agenda that the Secretary has been uh, uh, promoting in various uh, circles, including in Washington, uh, during the World Bank IMF uh, uh, regular meetings. And the stimulus includes a three-point plan of action. First of all, tackle the high cost of debt and rising risk of debt distress. Second, massively scale up affordable long-term financing for development. Third, expanding contingency financing to countries in need. So as you can see, this overall issue of financing for development is very much at the top and at the core of the, of the development agenda right now, and it's likely to remain for the years ahead. At the national level, we see also that many country level decentralized programs promote ambitious policies, but there is a need for more articulated financing strategy. In that regard, integrated national financing frameworks, INFFs, can play a crucial role in that regard, as they provide a holistic approach to financing development, aligning all sources of financing behind a country's national priorities. I see that as part of the webinar series, there will be a, a, a specific session dedicated to uh, INFF and what we are doing together, UNDP, in that regard. Uh, INFF are particularly relevant to the global South that they are designed to support countries in mobilizing resources to achieve the ADG. They provide a framework for aligning financing policies and strategies across sectors, leveraging public and private resources and promoting policy coherence. By using INFF, countries can develop comprehensive financing strategies that prioritize decent work and contribute to sustainable development. In conclusion, we are extremely happy to work with our African constituents in Ghana, Rwanda, Kenya, Zambia, and Malawi to support the development of INFF and other offer innovative financing strategies that prioritize decent work and contribute to sustainable development. Again, welcome to this uh, series of webinars, and I wish you fruitful discussions in the coming weeks. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Christophe Perrin, for setting the scene, for welcoming us, uh, and also for mentioning the Global Accelerator, uh, which is a new vehicle in the ILO to um, put resources towards social protection, jobs, social dialogue, Thank you for mentioning the uh, integrated national financing frameworks. And we are going to unpack in the coming webinars, some of these initiatives, some of these frameworks for you to understand and to be able to play your part in them. So thank you very much uh, for those introductory works, words. And thank you again, uh, colleagues to be with us today. Um, it's an interesting group of um, people representing the world of work, workers, employers, governments, um, a lot of experience in the room on the different parts of the decent work agenda. But as was mentioned, decent work priorities need resources, right? Social protection needs resources. Helping young people to find a job often needs resources. Um, Combating child labor needs resources. Skills development needs resources. You are aware of that, right? And what we see, unfortunately, is that many countries in Africa actually tap on less resources these days. Um, with COVID, development cooperation has been decreasing. It's harder for many African countries to access capital markets. Uh, inflation is going up. And even Chinese investments in many African countries are going down. So we see actually a reduction in resources going to many countries in the continent. Now, in this course, we are parting from the idea that there are enough financial resources available 
but that they are not necessarily flowing to the priorities that we have as representatives of the world of work. There's enough money available. There's private money, public money, development cooperation money, you know? but how can we make sure that that goes to our objectives? We need to be smart. And to me, that means two things. One, we need to work together. And two, we need to understand a little bit more about financing and financing development. Working together, South-South cooperation is an important um, uh, approach there. And um, that is the approach that Anita Amorim is going to present. And then financing, we're going to look at some of the initial concepts with uh, Duncan Chando talking about uh, integrated national financing frameworks. So in a minute, I'm going to hand over to Anita Amorim, who is the head of um, emerging partnerships and an expert on South-South cooperation as well. But before doing that, and before letting her talk about a topic that is really close to her heart, which is South-South cooperation, I wanted to ask you three questions. Um, can we have the polling questions? Yeah, there they are. So, question one to you, huh? I am familiar with the concept of South-South cooperation and you can only give me one answer, yes or no. Question two, I adhere to the principles of South-South cooperation. Again, can you choose between yes or no, or maybe you're not familiar with the principles. And three, a little harder, I have worked in South-South cooperation. So I would like to invite you to give an answer on all these three questions before we're actually going to talk about South-South cooperation. And I see the answers coming in. If you're on the mobile phone and you can't see the poll, write in the chat, give us something, some sign of life, some answer. But I see that most of you are able to respond. Just a few seconds. Okay. Let's look at the results then. Okay. Two thirds of us are familiar with the concept of South-South cooperation. That is great to see. Uh, and I see 42% adheres to the principles of South-South cooperation, but many of you are saying, mm, what exactly are these principles? And that's exactly what brings us here today. Uh, I see a no or a few no answers as well. So that is interesting to, to talk about in the presentation that is upcoming. I have worked in South-South cooperation and here I'm really happily surprised to see 50% uh, of those who are with us today saying, yes, I have worked in South-South cooperation. So Anita, I think that is a great start and uh, handing over to you. Yes, thank you, Linda. Thanks, Christophe and Margarita and uh, Paula and all teams here. Uh, by, by all means, this is a great start. Uh, and also following Christophe's steps here on the importance of having uh, the tripartite partners of this uh, little clinic, as we call it. Actually, somebody asked me if this was a medical uh, workshop, and I said, no, this is a, a new fancy word to deal with, uh, you know, when we do something at a more petit comité. But this petit comité is actually uh, composed of our social partners and ILO uh, partners. So we're very happy, including ILO staff. So we're very happy to be here. Uh, I think this answer is very, uh, the answers here are very, very encouraging that 50% uh, have worked with South South. So it's not going to be a, a lot of um, novelty and that 80% are familiar. Now, the principles per se, something that is more technical. So we'll discuss as we go along the presentation. So I'll try to share it here with you and put it in the presentation mode. Um, so I'm going to look at, uh, I'll do half of the presentation and I think Linda will interrupt me for sake of participatory purposes because I, I know she likes that. 
uh, in the middle, and then we will have some fun and games probably, but this is actually really the, the method of touring of, of entering the, the important uh, topics of uh, financing decent work. Of course, I uh, I also have to thank the the kind of internal south south that we have within uh, the ILO as well because it's a cooperation between partnerships, enterprises, ITC Turin, and also New York. And partnerships includes both my former department uh, Pardev and the current department Multilaterals. Um, so looking into financing this and work and why it's important for uh, south south is that as uh, Christophe has mentioned, uh, this is an agenda that is important for the North, but also for the global South, because when we're talking about financing for development, we're looking into development globally in the world, but there is of course a strong focus in the UN system uh, in the global South. So innovative responses and challenges that come from the South is what would be interesting us here when we look into this. So, well, here's the answer to the principles. What is South-South cooperation? It's really this exchange between equals and based on principles of horizontality. Uh, it can also include triangular cooperation when we add the, a country of the North, but the principles per se as adopted by the United Nations, big meeting that was called BAPA plus 40, that reaffirmed, uh, it's a ma massive conference with all heads of states uh, that reaffirmed uh, some of the principles that existed in the past already in many UN documents, but uh, this reaffirmation is important. Domestic ownership, mutual benefit, non-conditionality, complementarity, respect for national sovereignty, and demand-driven. So I think this is very important because often, even in the ILO, we are sometimes tempted to have this uh, traditional, old-fashioned, you know, uh, north-south uh, uh, approach. Uh, without having the participatory process that is needed. So this is valid actually also for other cooperation that is not only the South-South, but this is in particular what was important for uh, the countries of the South, but adopted by all countries. So we also, the whole question of mutual benefit is another very important one because we do not want that the South-South imitates uh, just, you know, it's not the new North-South, you know, it should be something more innovative that includes cooperation between countries in a multi-stakeholder approach. So when we talk about South-South, there are really actually uh, only two modalities. And this is important because sometimes we're confused with all the possibility. And it's South-South cooperation and triangular cooperation. And South-South cooperation is cooperation between two or more countries, but it can also be stakeholders, NGOs, INGOs, universities, parliamentarians of the Global South and triangular is when it includes the cooperation from a partner of the North. Um, but then there's of course sub-modalities, which is country to country cooperation, regional and sub-regional cooperation. And here is where uh, this is the interest for us in this workshop, because we want to look into, uh, we were looking for example, into Rwanda, Ghana, Malawi and Kenya, but what can be done within the sub-region of Eastern, Africa or Western Africa, or what, you know, we would like to look how the different subregions can cooperate on financing this and work. You can also have uh, interregional cooperation or across regions, which is the case of BRICS. Uh, and then other submodalities include cooperation between cities, which is called city to city cooperation, or uh, fragile to fragile cooperation, which is also a very important one. Often, some of the LDCs would be finding themselves within this uh, realm of fragile to fragile cooperation. So some of the mechanisms are capacity development. Uh, you will see that we work with ITC Turin. Uh, some of you maybe were in the past courses. So we work very often with ITC Turin because it's the kind of training arm of the ILO, exchange of good practices, but also building alliances and partnerships and creating networks. And there's a series of ways in which you can actually do that. I'll not enter the detail because we want to hear a little bit more on uh, ILO's role on South-South cooperation and also financing and support for SDGs. So the ILO brings together, you know, this is a kind of the unique, as, as uh, Christophe had also said, the tripartite constituents and, and acts as a facilitator. Uh, the objective is to forge inclusive partnerships and strategic alliances and transfer uh, knowledge whenever possible or share, you know, because the transferring would 
imply that one side has knowledge and the other doesn't, but often it's a sharing of knowledge. And then we monitor also on major intergovernmental decisions on South-South cooperation. Uh, some of the key, uh, let's say, background work for all this uh, development finance and the work of South-South, uh, I would say the major important aspects is the Addis Ababa action agenda because it really sets uh, the importance of working with South-South and Triangular Cooperation and following up uh, the Nairobi outcome document of the U UN United Nations High-Level Conference on South South. Um, VAPA plus 40 already mentioned to you, but the interesting thing of VAPA plus 40 is that it introduced for the first time the importance of having financial support provided to South South, to looking into the financial uh, institutions, including banks, international regional funds, as actors as well of South South, because there used to be a little bit of a dichotomy, like the people of the South were dealing only with solidarity, peer learning, you know, uh, sharing, but there was not, you know, let's say that the banking, the financing that was delinked de to South South. And you can see this has changed quite a lot when you look at the new uh, BRICS development back, uh, bank and other uh, development banks or the African Development Bank or the, you know, in Brazil, the Beni de Asi, the biggest bank of the South uh, for national and international cooperation. So this has changed as well. So the, the whole language of uh, South South has also added some, you know, let's say teeth, <laughs> you know, financial teeth to it. And before it was a little bit more on the sharing. I'm not saying that the sharing of good practices is not important, it's equally important. And, uh, in-kind contributions and in-kind work uh, and policy work might have as much importance as uh, the financial aspects. So there's one uh, paragraph in particular in BAPA that mentions the question of development finance. Uh, so I, I pulled it out because it's as it's a major uh, UN outcome document, it mentions the importance of financing for development and mobilizing support for innovative sources of mechanism of additional funding to support the SDGs. So this is the whole purpose of this workshop. And of course, in our case, we're looking at decent work. So I mean, not only financing for development, but how can that uh, link up to decent work? So the United Nations has some mechanisms for this when it comes to South-South, and this is done through uh, UNOSC, which is the United Nations Office for South-South Cooperation, which is the uh, body in charge with following up uh, South-South Cooperation at all levels, policy, advocacy, finance, and including some public-private partnerships. Uh, so we work through them because we're part of this mechanism. In fact, I'm attending the high-level committee of the General Assembly uh, at the end of the month. And this is where we get some information concrete. And then uh, we will, don't worry, we're gonna go to com some concrete examples with Duncan, but this concrete information will also feed the type of work you'll be looking into. Uh, there's linkages, of course, and here I know Patricia Richter is here with us from uh, Social Finance, so she can jump in when uh, we make some uh, comments uh, on her area, which are not, complete, but I think that there's also very important linkages that we recognize in the partnerships department between South-South and Triangular Cooperation, uh, social and solidarity economy, also social finance, and financing decent work. So these areas seem to be uh, separate, but actually the fact of working more towards social finance has opened the mentality of the, let's say, ILO constituents and ILO in general and partners to foster uh, local economic development, boost community building, and also look into uh, financing decent work. Uh, it's also very relevant for the SDGs uh, and social finance. So there, as you know, uh, we are going to enter later, and this there'll be some sessions which are more specific on how the social finance and financing decent work can be done through the South. And you have many examples about ethical banking, financial cooperatives, um, credit unions of the South, cooperative banks. So there's lots of interesting innovations and this is what we would like to hear from you in your good practices. So I thank those that have sent us already. And this type of interesting things. There are also other mechanisms such as blended finance that links public and private sources. 
And uh, you, you also see that uh, social finance has appeared in participatory budgeting, uh, labor solidarity funds, social financial intermediaries, uh, microcredit. So there's a series of mechanisms that can help us uh, link up. Uh, one example that we had picked, it's not exactly uh, financing decent work as such, because it's more linked to a fund of India, but as it links to PPPs as well, we thought it was relevant when we talked about it with Margarita to point it out, Margarita Lalayan, who's the, one of the big experts that is here, uh, to mention it because it's a fund of the United Nations uh, headed by one government, but is also looking into how PPPs plus governmental funding can support these uh, processes. We would have something similar uh, with Brazil through the uh, IBSA fund, India, Brazil, South Africa. Uh, and uh, now growing, I mean, China is also funding in terms of you know uh, decent work, but uh, the, the public-private uh, part is coming through uh, the skills uh, mechanism. So it's still not uh, in the, the realm of what we would call financing for decent work, but it's, it's also going that direction slowly. Um, I think this is the part I was supposed to stop, no? Because now uh, we, uh, yes. We I didn't want to intervene, Anita, yes. but that is what you were going to <laughs> Yes, I think this is, a, <laughs> a, a, by mistake, is in the wrong order. This is a slide that, uh, that probably uh, Danka will give, but I just wanted to say a, a small thing that uh, the, workshop that we will have later on on uh, integrated uh, national financing frameworks that we will have a colleague Wolfgang Schiffer from uh, ex multilaterals from the same department as me par partnerships and uh, Raquel Torres uh, experts she would, they will enter more in detail will show why it's important to also have in these frameworks a uh, view of the global south so I think with that uh, I can stop here I'll stop thank sharing. you so much uh, Anita yes. And I'd like to open for questions or any comments that you may have on what was just uh, presented. So the background to South-South and Triangular Cooperation, the principles, the examples that were given. Uh, any questions, any comments from your end on that? You uh, can uh, raise your hand. Anybody can ask. My low colleagues also very welcome right in the chat or just open your camera, your microphone, sorry. Opening for questions and comments. Angelica, please. Hello, thank you very much, uh, Linda and Anita, for this presentation. Uh, I don't have a question per se, but I just was uh, thinking when I saw actually the, the, the topic of the webinar popping up in my email, uh, I, I was thinking also the importance of South-South cooperation for uh, resource mobilization. So I was wondering if we can like touch on this specific topic, because at least from the project that I'm working on uh, for the Regional Office for Africa, for us, it's important to leverage on the partnerships that we are creating with countries within in Africa uh, to combat child labor, to also uh, showcase this to the, to say, North community of, uh, of uh, development partners so that they can see the potential of South-South collaboration and be interested on, uh, on partnerships that are a little bit more triangular, but because of the cooperation that we have in the South. So just uh, I, the idea I had uh, in case we can touch on the on this webinar on the next webinars as well. Thank you. Thank you, Angelica Munoz from Abidjan, that is, right? Yes. Anita, you want to say a few words about that? Yes, yeah, sure. I, if I understood, the question is about triangular cooperation and uh, it's directed to me, not to Christophe, right? But uh, Christophe is welcome yes. to answer. <laughs> uh, so, um, I think triangular cooperation is one of the uh, very important uh, forms of South-South cooperation. It was only a little slide that I that I shared with you. And uh, because 
you know, often, of course, we need uh, resources, as Linda said, you know, we, when we do financing for decent work, it's not only about sharing uh, policies and programs, but also resources. So, of course, traditionally, the countries of the North, let's say, or ACD, OECD, that group will have more funding to provide. So there is absolutely nothing wrong with having uh, countries of the South uniting, let's say, Eastern African group of countries, or let's say, I, I saw some interesting practices that were sent to me by Rwanda, Ghana, and Kenya, uh, some on the union, some on the private sector. So let's say they want to find funds, and I think one even had mentioned um, some funds from Finland, uh, in, let's say, to establish their, you know, some kind of a financing development mechanism. I see no problem with that, you know, absolutely no problem with that. It could be some kind of a facility or a mechanism that adds uh, the triangle cooperation. I'm sure there's some concrete examples, and here my enterprises colleagues might have uh, better examples on the financing uh, front, but um, in the collections of good practices that I've sent you, uh, because I've been emailing you, by the way, sorry about uh, <laughs> excess emails, but it's because we really want to hear from you with your good practices. We have we have a couple now, but we need probably more. But in there, you will see some examples of uh, cooperation with, uh, you know, the so-called uh, North. I mean, even those definitions, North, South, sometimes are a little bit fuzzy because, uh, of course, some of these... Um, these uh, definitions they are coming from old, uh, how can I say, not old, but you know, traditional ways of thinking. But we have cooperation with the Swiss, we have cooperation with the German institutions, we have cooperation with Spain. So I mean, there is lots of uh, possibilities of triangular cooperation. So I see Patricia raise her hand and I'm sure she can give some concrete examples of this triangular cooperation. Uh, can I hand the floor over to Patricia, Linda? <laughs> so, Absolutely. <laughs> yes. Thanks, Linda. Thanks, Anita. Thanks, Christoph. And thanks, Angelica, for, for your question. I just wanted to bring up one, one example um, that, uh, that is very recent. Um, we do have in the financial sector actually quite some entities institutions that do have money that want that this money is being used for a good cause. Um, but they also do want to have their money back, which is legitimate because um, this money often is only in, just entrusted in them for a certain period of time and then it needs to come back. Um, so we have um, in, we, we have, for example, in Colombia, actually a, an institution that has been supporting the government um, in figuring out new financing mechanisms for, um, also for youth employment, generally getting unemployed people back into employment. This uh, company is called uh, Insticlio. They started off working with the government on such innovative financing mechanisms in Colombia, and it seems to be working. Now, what is the South-South angle here? We have seen lately that um, in North Africa, governments are also interested in such financing mechanism, results-based financing mechanisms. So Morocco has been a front runner there, actually. And um, we have now Morocco government that experimented with a results-based financing mechanism for youth employment, um, also supported by that same company actually from Morocco, from, from Colombia in Stiglio. So we do have some exchange of expertise from South to South and back and forth. And this is where really, um, again, new innovation is coming from. In North Africa, we are seeing now also initial replications coming up in Tunisia, where the government of Tunisia is also interested in exploring results-based financing mechanisms, again, for youth employment. So this is how these schemes are informing each other and where you actually have expertise from the South informing, filling in gaps, in other countries in the south. So I, I really like that because this is fully on ILO themes, on uh, integration into the labor markets, on, on youth employment and preaching from Latin America to North Africa, and then even from North Africa to North Africa. 
Thank you, Patricia Richter, for that uh, excellent example. Uh, I see some more comments in the chat. Ah, there are practical problem uh, issues with the platform. We will come to that for sure, and we will deal with that for sure. Um, um, Linda, yeah. maybe, I don't know, you're probably planning some little exercise in between my uh, my presentation and Duncan, or I don't know what you're planning, but I just wanted to show, uh, because I think it also answers some of these triangular cooperation questions. I just wanted to show a screen very quickly. Please. Uh, okay, thank you. So this is in the South-South meeting point. Uh, I don't know if you can see it. Yes. Yeah. Is it uh, full Perfect. screen? Perfect. Yeah, okay, good. So I just wanted to show that under, and we'll give you the, the full address, under um, southsouthpoint.net, uh, which is our meeting point. It's actually hosted by Turin. So thank you, Turin, again for that. <laughs> you have a page on financing decent work. And, and that page uh, gives like uh, the good practices on South South and triangular cooperation. Uh, there is a guide that you can use also that will give you some examples. And there is a drive that also gives the good practices from different courses. There is some interviews. This is our former director that was uh, before uh, Christophe Perrin and uh, was talking also to the former UN Special Envoy on Financing, but uh, it's still very relevant and interesting. The training courses and everything that we've done together with Patricia, Linda, Margarita, there's also uh, papers there. So I would definitely encourage you to, if you are still looking into writing your good practice, I would encourage you to look at these pages so that will help you also define some of uh, the work uh, that you can do. Over. Wonderful. Thank you for that, uh, Anita. And let us move on because as we said today, we're going to look, yes, at that concept of South South cooperation working together, but also we're going to go a little bit already uh, in the some of the concepts related to financing and financing decent work. So for that, um, Duncan Chando is going to give an introduction. Um, but before he does that, again, I have a few questions for you. Um, can we have the following question? Okay. Integrated national financing frameworks, they were mentioned by Christophe Perrin. And my question here for you is, have you heard about integrated national financing frameworks? A yes or a no? And in relation to that, and the last question for you today, have you worked with on integrated national financing frameworks? Any experience in the room working um, from the ILO, government, workers, employers side with integrated national financing frameworks. And I see you guys are very quick in answering. So I think we can have the results straight away. Can we share the results? Okay. So two thirds of you say, yes, I have heard about this. That's good. But only 13% of you have worked on it. And that is actually more than I uh, expected. That is uh, great to hear that apart from the experts here, we have some people who actually have practically uh, worked on uh, integrated national financing frameworks in their country. So that is good to know. And uh, I think I would then hand over to Duncan Chando. As I mentioned at the beginning of the webinar, he's an ILO consultant, a development specialist, uh, expert also on South-South and triangular cooperation. And um, Duncan, glad to have you with us today. Looking forward to your presentation. Duncan, I'll help you share if that's okay with you. Okay, thank you so much. And, uh... Uh, thank you, Sanita, for the introduction, uh, even mentioning on that aspect of INFF. 
Uh, just to uh, mention that we need to understand that IMFF actually, in terms of. Uh, uh, he muted himself. Oh, we don't hear you well, yeah. Duncan. I think you are muted, Duncan, somehow. Yeah. Or, yeah. yeah. Saying, uh, there's a linkage between INFF and Addis Ababa Action Agenda, whereby this like, uh, is a tool for implementing Addis Ababa Action Agenda. And we need to understand that uh, INFF actually is, is a tool that countries are using to finance SDGs, using different modality of financing and also mobilizing uh, different resources from, from different quarters. So uh, the country's sustainable development strategy says what is to be financed. Uh, but just to get away from, uh, from what uh, is on the screen, but I also wanted to mention two, uh, three things uh, that we need to know about INFF is uh, it spells out how, there's the how part of it, how national strategy will finance and implement uh, SDGs, but also it spells out what needs to be financed. But also uh, the last one is also, it also helps in planning and delivering uh, of various aspects in terms of SDGs. And like I mentioned earlier, is it's a, it's a, it's a tool that is helping us to implement the Addis Ababa Action Agenda. Uh, next, uh, next, Anita. Thank you. So uh, three things uh, we need to know about INFF. I know most of us are saying that we've interacted with it, some of us we have not, uh, but also this is just an introduction to give us uh, the gist of it because all this for the, the next campaign is what we're going to be talking about and uh, various colleagues, uh, different expertise are going to share uh, one or two things on, on INFF. So uh, INFF again is a planning tool. I think I've mentioned that it helps in aligning national planning and financing system, also helping in assessing the cost of investment needed to realize national visions. And uh, the last part also helping in uh, mapping the financial landscape uh, but uh, the question that we might be asking ourselves uh, that uh, why is it uh, important for South South cooperation? And uh, we need to understand that uh, when planning SDGs, there is highly there's high possibility of having the South South cooperation aspect angle. Uh, that uh, through this again through this conversation is something that uh, will be uh, mentioned. Uh, Anita, uh, to allow me, I think I have some few points that I want to share that are not in the in the slides. But just to mention that I know most of us here are uh, policy makers, a number of us also working for government. Uh, but now we need to understand why is INFF also important for the work that we're doing. Number one is it will also help in mobilizing additional finances. You as a policy maker, you as somebody who is working for government or different entities, uh, so that's number one. Again, it's also helped in improving or aligning different types of finances, both domestic and national and, and international. And also, uh, the other thing why NFA is also important for, for policymakers, or all of us who are in this call today, it also enhances coherence across different financing policies. Uh, the other thing is also uh, helping uh, better management of risk and increasing complex financing landscape. And lastly, it helps in streamlining the wide variety of tools of our international community uh, in terms of support. Next, Anita. That was outside the main uh, PowerPoint, but I, I, I just felt that it's some point that I really needed to, to, help, uh, to, to, to stress. Okay, next. So I think this is what I've, I've, I've basically mentioned on that. So when you're talking about South South cooperation, I think we have, we have you've heard about uh, you know different types of modality. We have country to country. We have regional cooperation. So just to share some examples of what has been going on in terms of to give us a picture, even as, as some of us are trying to uh, to craft what's what's the South South cooperation initiative or a project. Uh, so I will share some three or four, three or so uh, different. Uh, initiative that will also help us understand what SFTC is all about. So this one, which is uh, promoting financial inclusion to strengthen women's uh, agency, women's agency in South African countries. So this is an initiative by ILO, uh, again, working close with the SATEC and also COMESA and the ESC. So the aim is to facilitate knowledge, knowledge sharing, peer learning between the Soto, South Africa, and the Sotini. So this gives you a, a gist that uh, when you talk about South South, it involves more than one country already. So we are seeing uh, different countries partnership uh, partnering this: the Soto, South Africa, and Sotini. And uh, again, this project builds on good practices. 
in other countries, including Egypt, Kenya, Ethiopia, and economic empowerment. So this share, uh, this gives, uh, I mean, in terms of uh, the picture of how a the initiatives should, should look like. We find that there are different countries involved and all that. Next, next. next. Uh, can you see the next slide? It's the Zambia Tobacco. Is okay. The yeah, yeah. There's also another initiative. That, so again, there's another one. Uh, we are calling the Zambia Tobacco Control Social Impact Fund. This is something that is in the process, so it has not uh, kicked off yet. But we feel that is is a, is a good practice that we we need to share. And it also it can help us in terms of framing some of the good practices even as we go on with, the, with this uh, clinic. So this is an initiative being proposed between UNDP, WHO, FAO, and ILO. And uh, it will, it's going to be the first tobacco control social impact fund. Uh, in short, it's called TPIB. It support tobacco farmers in Zambia to transition to economically viable, environmentally sustainable alternative tobacco cultivation. Because as you, you are aware that uh, the topic of tobacco is, uh, is ongoing and uh, there are there are things that uh, as countries, even as we, as we talk about being uh, tobacco free, but also we are looking at the aspect of how can we help these farmers to venture into uh, different initiatives that are more productive and also uh, environmentally friendly. So again, this uh, this initiative is aimed to leverage private sector capital to be innovative, pay for success. So like I said before, this is something that is in the pipeline, but I think that uh, uh, even as we, we need to keep our eyes on today and our ears we have to just know how this is going on so if successful then i think that this can be a very good pilot and it can help uh, countries like madagascar malawi zimbabwe the countries in the region uh, to from each other next next okay uh, no next one the previous one Okay, so the other initiative for us for SSTC, the Zambia one, next one. Okay, that, thank you. So this big Malawi- I think Malawi we are, we are a bit uh, disconnected time. in time, but this is uh, the Malawi window, which is appearing now. Yes, yes, yeah, I'm okay. talking about the- Okay. So again, this initiative that uh, aims to reduce poverty, hunger, inequality, and again, these are linked to different SDGs in Malawi, and also helping in creating jobs for small businesses. So the goal is here is to uh, is to is to uh, to raise uh, up to 335 million US dollars in uh, in capital supported by both technical assistance uh, to improve business quality and impact sustainable development goals while reducing risk and cost. Again, this is a joint initiative uh, and the main objective, like indicated earlier, is uh, uh, poverty reduction. Uh, different agencies are working on this. We have UNDP, UNCDF, FAO, and different national partners, including Ministry of Trade. Again, this program will also provide an good opportunity for peer learning uh, among the neighboring countries, the of Zambia, Tanzania, and Zambia. So having looked at these uh, three different initiatives, already, already we know uh, at least some aspect of INFF, but also we are starting to know what type of uh, financing is outside there in different African countries. And I know we are also going to have uh, an opportunity whereby we are going to share what is happening in our countries in terms of INFF, what are some of the good practices. So here, we have some questions for discussion. Anita, I don't know if you're going to do this now or uh, it's going to be called. Yeah, maybe I can I can just throw the questions out because uh, your your sound, we managed to hear you, but your sound was breaking, but we managed to, to hear you. I noticed Linda was patient, but we <laughs> we managed to hear it was, it was okay. Uh, so we had some questions here, Linda, and maybe you can uh, later elaborate yes. on them. Yes. yes. How can the Sorry. Global yeah. South support SDGs? Uh, what is the role of the tripartite partners in the global south vis-a-vis -vis, of course this financing inclusive approach uh, how can south south support this practice uh, and processes share good practices and then of course from our perspective of the ilo can these also be a human-centered approach because each time we talk about a lot of money 
we 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 sometimes forget the human uh, face onto all that, and and how can this be uh, helped through peer learning? So that was some of the questions we wanted to throw for debate. Over to you. Thank you for these questions. Uh, those are good ones. Uh, but also, if you have any questions, if anything was not clear in the presentation, if you have a question on these integrated national financing frameworks or on some of the examples that Duncan presented, uh, you are very welcome. I see a hand from Angelica. Angelica, why don't you... Sorry to take uh, uh, too yeah. much of floor. I have a question. Uh, it sounds very interesting, this concept of integrated national financing frameworks. And I was just wondering what is the role of the ILO on helping countries develop this type of frameworks? And a uh, second question that I was also thinking of is whether or not the word integrated means that it is about the whole, I don't know, development agenda of a country or if we can de integrate these frameworks to a thematic area, for example, uh, in my case, uh, to child labor. So uh, if, if you can just uh, clarify this point, because it sounds very interesting. Thank you. Uh, Danka, do you want to start and then I can complete? Hello? Yes? Yes, I, I don't know if you could hear the questions. Uh, otherwise, I can start okay. answering and Thank then. You. Thank yes. you. I think. Uh, hello? Okay, can hear. You can hear me now? Yes, we can. Okay, thank you. So, I think, uh, Angelica, just to, to answer your question, uh, I think first we need to understand that. Uh, ILO as one of the as the UN agency that is also uh, playing a very key role in uh, in ensuring uh, we achieve the SDGs. So an INFF plays a very key role in, the, in supporting countries to to achieve SDGs. And for ILO, the focus here is SDG number eight, uh, as you're aware of, in terms of decent work. So already there is uh, there's ongoing work. I think uh, colleagues from enterprise, but also uh, I don't know if. Uh, Maybe tomorrow or the day after, um, uh, uh, Fernando will also give a clear picture on what some of the initiatives that ILO is doing. Uh, but we need to understand that already there are different initiatives. Uh, ILO is partnering with UNDP in, in some of them. ILO is working closely with the within the regional bloc. So I think in in a, in, a, in, a, in a broader perspective, that's just an overview. Uh, but uh, there's more that is going to come. Like I mentioned earlier, this was just like more of an, an introduction, just to give a gist of uh, what is what. Over to you. Yes, thank you. So I uh, I think maybe Margarita, because she's uh, typing here, I'm not sure she has her microphone, but I can answer uh, on the child labor part. I uh, was uh, good that, happy to see your interest on child labor, Angelica. I worked almost 10 years in IPEC International Program for Elimination of Child Labor. So I also have a keen interest on that topic. And um, I think um, what is interesting there is that we had uh, during Durban conference, uh, the, there was this very active uh, panel that was linking financing the Indian civil war and uh, the possibility of combating child labor. And I had a focus on Africa. Israel. So I will try to share that uh, with you, the results of the panel and, uh, and of that discussion. So I see Patricia raised her hand, so maybe she has some also concrete uh, things to share. Thanks, Anita. And a very nice question, um, Angelica. The integrated national financing frameworks as a concept um, is actually a tool coming from UNDP, but it is really relevant for, for any country that does want to put some strategic thinking on integrating different financing flows and think about how to make finance available for the SDGs. So it is very useful. Um, at the country level, we I don't have the exact number now. I think it's 86 integrated national financing framework processes that, that have been started um, all over the world. And many of them, of course, have employment as one of the themes, jobs as a theme um, that uh, government wants to achieve um, and figuring out the financing behind there. Um, 
together with UNDP, um, ILO last year actually put together a, a guidance for ILO staff, but also other UN staff on how to integrate um, employment considerations into these INFF um, processes. So maybe we can actually share that as part of the uh, of the material for for the series of of clinics as ILO. We have been involved in a couple of countries, but at a very different level. I know this is the clinics for, for Africa. I can give one example actually from Bangladesh where the ILO office has been very much involved in the policy processes focusing on employment. Um, and this has gone pretty far. The big question mark now is when it comes to implementation, what follows and what is important exactly at this point in time is how do we get all the stakeholders that somehow deal with finance around the table and not just for a short period of time. And this is where the financial sector yet again plays a big role because the financial sector in the country is not there for three, four, five years, but hopefully for longer and hopefully also stable. So the financial sector plays a crucial role in operationalizing integrated national financing frameworks. And also for the topic that you are interested in, in, in child labor, because through the financial sector, the financial sector on the one hand can actually create um, or contribute to the creation of child labor, but it can also help towards eliminating it. And these are exactly the discussions that need to happen at the national level when drafting integrated national financing frameworks, figuring out who can contribute and what, and then putting in place the implementation structures for it. And um, I do believe uh, my colleague Fernando will speak in one session a little bit more about that, what Duncan mentioned, but just for you to know, the child labor agenda should really pop up at these national discussions in the integrated national financing frameworks. And unfortunately, they do not yet pop up. And this is, I would say, the job of the ILO the, as part of you and country teams to bring up this agenda and participate actively in INFF conversations and bring it up and make clear that financing for this topic is also needed and needs to be thought through. So um, you have the joker card actually, once you are involved at the country level in such um, discussions to bring it up because no other UN agency um, will cover it. Thank you very much, Patricia. That is very, very useful uh, and very clear about the role of the ILO to accompany our constituents in making sure that those objectives are brought to the attention, are integrated in those international, uh, integrated national financing frameworks. Very good. Uh, colleagues, participants, participants, I would like to hear a little bit more from you and uh, to that end i am um, uh, putting a link in the chat in the meeting chat a link that will bring you to a virtual whiteboard because from those who are here with us today uh, colleagues government workers employers representatives i would just like to hear some of your thoughts now that you have heard about our South cooperation, about INFF and some related topics, what are your thoughts as to social partners, um, actions that social partners can take to increase financing for decent work objectives? Because that's what brings us here. Um, Financing as a tool to um, work on our decent work agenda, our child labor agenda, as Angelica was mentioning, our social protection agenda, our youth employment agenda, our social dialogue agenda, whatever it is. Um, what ideas did you pick up listening to these different presentations 
as to what social partners can do to increase financing for decent work objectives. So how does this virtual whiteboard work? Um, and I see many of you are already there. Many of you have clicked on that link in the meeting chat, which is the right thing to do. Then your virtual whiteboard opens. You see question there. And you see on the left of your screen, a couple of icons, uh, a pen, an eraser, um, a select button. And then the fourth icon there on the left of your screen, it's a sticky note. You can pick up that sticky note by clicking on it. Then immediately you will see a little screen where you can write your idea. You can even change the color of your sticky note and then you can paste it on um, that uh, virtual whiteboard. So thinking of what you have just heard, what are your ideas? What can the social partners do to increase financing for decent work? And I see some first ideas coming in, but I'd like to give you all a little bit of time to, to think about this. First ideas, and then we can elaborate them in further webinars. And uh, as Margarita was saying in the chat, there is also a lot of information on the eCampus in the different modules. Your ideas on that virtual whiteboard, please. I see three ideas so far. And I'm also going to share the virtual whiteboard in this Zoom meeting. which at the risk of confusing people, because then you see the virtual whiteboard once on your computer and once on my computer, right? So if you want to write on it, you should do that on the virtual whiteboard on your computer. But I see already a good number of, um, of ideas here. And the first one that came in, more cooperation between countries and Africa on financing decent work. Excellent. South-South cooperation can support joint work. Yes, definitely. Involve the private sector and leverage corporate social responsibility actors for development. That's an interesting one. To work in tripartism through, tripartism <clears throat> through social dialogue. Support in social inclusion and environment. Before financing, cooperation must be nurtured, especially amongst countries with similar economic capacities. This could also include in-kind contributions. Very thoughtful. Exchange of good practices. Absolutely involve the banking sector. Good point. Knowledge sharing and peer-to-peer -peer learning. Yes. Learning from Ghana, Kenya, and Rwanda. In general, countries where... Um, this has already uh, evolved, the work on integrated national financing frameworks, for instance, and in the ministerial coherence so that the Ministry of Labor talks to finance. I really like that contribution. Learn from social partners in other regions. Excellent. Does somebody want to elaborate a little bit on the post-its that you have put forward here? or your ideas in the chat box, they are also welcome. Increasing knowledge and understanding of decent work agenda for buy-in by national stakeholders. That is also very important, I think. Mm -hmm. Who would like to take the floor from the participants now? Because we heard a lot from our ILO colleagues. But I see some very good ideas here. Any hands? Andrea, please. Yes. Hello, thank you so much. Um, yeah, I have uh, added the posits regarding the change of good practices and knowledge sharing and peer-to-peer -peer learning, uh, because taking into account Duncan's and uh, Anita presentation, uh, I have seen that the concept of financial inclusion, at least in, the, in this region in Africa, it's very related to the topics of environment and sustainability. 
Uh, so I think that that's it's because they these countries face the same kind of uh, problems. So um, it will be interesting that they shared uh, practices and uh, knowledge that they have on these issues to find solutions together. Thank you so much, uh, Andrea. That's an excellent uh, point, excellent contribution. Yes, we all same, share the same um, problems and challenges, especially in the area of, of environment, right? Mm -hmm. Who else? I'd like to hear a few more contributions. Austin. Thank you, colleagues, and i um, happy to be here. I joined in a bit later than um, expected. Just to also contribute and note that I, I think um, one, one thing that um, has been very glaring for Mao and in terms of engagement is um, competing needs and desires of sometimes partners and stakeholders to become very relevant and visible. And in a bid to ensure that, you know, that on agenda, I mean, the ILO is working on the dissent work agenda, the UNDP has its own framework, you know, that the, there's that um, needs to become more visible than the than other agencies. And I think, you know, that's where the CFs come into place, the cooperation frameworks, ensuring that, you know, at the UN level that um, all the agencies contribute to delivering as one and also working with the, the relevant national stakeholders and government partners and i think that we you know each agency and especially of course the ilo can better sell its um, institutional mandates and see the reason why you know there should be the need for that integrated national um, funding framework so i think you know in that light also the role of social dialogue plays a very, very critical role. Thank you. Thank you, Austin. A very good point. And thank you for bringing in the cooperation frameworks, which are, of course, saying what the different um, UN agencies and other partners should be doing in the country. And then the integrated national financing framework should reflect how all of that should then be financed right so there's a clear link there um and um yeah we cannot agree with you more that sometimes competition between agencies and agenda um are are making that work a little harder right um thank you for that austin very good points who else would like to elaborate on what we already see on our screen here One last contribution before we move on. No. Okay. Someone in the chat. Okay, okay, about the INFS. Good. Well, thank you for those uh, contributions. And thank you for those uh, for those ideas. Um, we have just 15 minutes left. And in this webinar, we went straight into the content uh, without giving you the overview of what this course is actually about. So uh, let me uh, go and do that right now and give you a little bit more of an idea of uh, what you got yourself into. So just to uh, repeat uh, briefly what the goal is here of this course, um, we really want to equip participants in this course with both the knowledge and the skills to engage in national consultations and to advocate for the inclusion of decent work consideration in national financing strategies and contribute to their successful implementation. Yeah? And uh, you are mostly representing countries where those international financing strategies are in place or are coming in place. So how can you bring decent work cooperation into, into the picture 
And how can you also then make sure that those things are uh, implemented successfully? Leon, please go ahead. Leon Pierre. Yeah, thank you so much for the discussion. Do, do you hear me? Yes, we hear you very well. Yeah, thank you so much for the uh, interesting meeting on South to South approach um, in Rwanda. But by the way, let me introduce myself. I'm called Leon Pierre Rusanganwa. I work for Private Sector Federation in the advocacy department. Um, we, we first of all had uh, the Decent Work Country Program um, in 2018, and it was uh, signed by the tripartite. It is the government of Rwanda, which is the Ministry of um, Labor and the Public Service, um, the Private Sector Federation, which is the umbrella of the private sector, and um, the workers' organization, actually SESTRA, and it was endorsed by ILO. Um, we have opted to do our work through social dialogue, which brings more gains in, um, in um, increased access to remunerative employment for women, youth and the people and the persons with disabilities, the extended coverage of social protection schemes for most vulnerable groups of citizens and uh, strengthening labor market institution for increased engagement of social partners to contribute to effective social dialogue and the sounds of industrial relations. Um, the last one is the increased protection of workers and the representatives of workers' rights in the workplace. So this is in the process for formation of next uh, strategies, including the funding from different um, development partners and also seeing how uh, employers can be um, in the form of a database. We, we, we have different groups that uh, are, are coming on board. Um, we can mention women cross-border trade, uh, people in the mining sector, uh, and this is well going because PSF has formed a, a new structure formed by five clusters, agriculture and the livestock, industry, uh, trade, uh, service, uh, and uh, the specialized cluster formed of women, youth, and uh, persons with disabilities. So our development partners are coming on board. L let me uh, mention Enabel, UNDP, and also uh, the, the public institution financing like uh, BDF, uh, th th that is Business Development Fund that is greatly doing a heavy work to to so to to reduce poverty and also increasing uh, the level of decent work in the country. So the private sector federation and uh, as a employer organization and uh, the workers organization. Let me mention Sestra. We, we are trying to work together with the Ministry of Labor to increase more people in the employment, uh, re uh, struggling to, to, to reach 
the set goals in the national strategy um, for transformation. So I, I thank you so much for this meeting. And uh, thank we, you. We are happy to be with you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Leon so Pierre. Thank you Hello. for. Um, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, well, first of all, for all the important work done in Rwanda by the social partners on the Decent Work Country Program uh, and the commitments that you have uh, brought together to implement it. It also brings us to a question as to how, how that Decent Work Country Program relates to the uh, INFF. And in many countries, of course, the ILO has the Decent Work Country Program where it clearly says what the ILO is going to do with the different partners in the country. And then the INFF is kind of as an umbrella above there. These two planning frameworks, they live together peacefully. <laughs> uh, and um, hopefully, you know, there is convergence between them. So I think that is a very important um, point that you mentioned there. So thank you, thank you for sharing. And we will come back a little bit more in next webinars. Uh, we will come back on, on those topics. Excellent. So just to continue um, a little bit about what this course is about and what you're going to um, um, uh, meet in the near future or go through in the near future. Here are the objectives. I'm not going to read them all to you now because I think they have been made clear. It's really about learning and sharing knowledge on finance and decent work, on South-South cooperation, um, on financing strategy, but also the idea to maybe establish inter-country or regional groups that can support each other mutually and continue to exchange and to learn on this important aspect of financing decent work and South-South cooperation. So those are our objectives. Of course, as mentioned, the whole course is also uh, delivered with a South-South learning approach where it is really about uh, learning, sharing and exploring solutions together throughout the program. Hence also uh, Anita sharing the South-South uh, um, points and uh, hence um, some other um, uh, approaches that we have to make sure that uh, mutual learning and mutual cooperation is taking place. We have four webinars, just four webinars, one per week, always on Zoom. We have four modules uh, that are self-learning modules and they are on the electronic campus. Uh, and these four self-guided modules are really part and parcel of this course. Uh, there is a lot more information there on South-South cooperation, on integrated national financing frameworks, on different financing mechanisms, the role of uh, the social partners. So have a look at those modules or go through the modules. And we invite you to uh, deliver uh, an assignment, which is a good practice. I'm coming to that. So uh, webinars, just four webinars, um, one per week. Um, and you will see that we are getting together again on the 2nd of May on the topic of financing these work challenges, good practices and opportunities in the sub-regions. Um, then the week after, we will talk a little bit more about financing mechanisms. The last webinar is more about mainstreaming decent work and social dialogue on financing the SDGs, and always with this South-South approach. In terms of the modules that you will find on the electronic campus, the first one is about um, current developments in financing development and the need for financing. The second one is about country examples and cross-country cooperation on financing decent work, the South-South and triangular cooperation approach. Key financing mechanisms explored comes in the third module. And then the last module is on mainstreaming decent work in the financing of SDGs. The assignments, 
and we have been in contact with all of you on the email, is uh, if you could submit just a one-page good practice of South-South Cooperation for Financing work. Um, and we ask that from you, not so much for our library, but really to share it with the other participants. Um, to get to know each other, to learn from different examples, and maybe there is scope for cooperation in the different examples that you can be sharing. In terms of timing, uh, we would recommend that you go through the self-learning modules before the webinars. So the first module before the next webinar, uh, but these self-guided modules will stay available on the electronic campus until the end of June. And we know you're all busy people. Uh, so we make a recommendation, try to do the, the, the module before the next webinar, but we also know that sometimes things come in between and we make sure that all that information that is there will stay available until the end of June. We are looking at the uh, attendance of uh, the, the webinars for certification approaches. Anita, I forgot something. Oh, no, no, no. I was just going to insist that even though you said it on the good practices, because it really helps us uh, for the sessions uh, to come. Unfortunately, I'm not here on the 2nd of May, uh, but Duncan, uh, yourself, and Raquel Torres, which is an INFF expert, will be there. And Margarita yeah. also won't be there. But the, the, we would really need your good practices. And I have shared the link and where you can find it. It's also in the multiple emails I've sent. And I have sent several examples. So I think even if you do not have a good practice uh, as South South, don't worry and send anything you could imagine that would be interesting. You can think a little bit out of the box as well. Over to you. Sorry, Linda. No, thank you for that, Anita. And lastly, I think that is lastly, yes. Um, just to, we quickly introduce the speakers at the beginning of webinars, of the webinar, but there is actually a whole team behind the development of this course. Uh, and here you see our names on the screen. Anita Morin, Head of Emerging and Special Partnerships at ILO Headquarters. Fernando Messineo Libano, who is a technical officer on social finance at ILO headquarters, and who today um, uh, could not be with us, but luckily we had Patricia Richter with us from the social finance program, expert on, uh, on many financing topics. Uh, thank you for being with us today, Patricia. Duncan Chando, the international consultant, uh, myself, uh, I work here at the International Training Center as a program manager. And then importantly, Margarita Lalayam, uh, who is the course manager and the uh, drive also behind this training program. And Mrs. Paula Agnello, um, who has been coordinating participation in this course uh, and uh, works as overall course secretary um, I think many of you have been in touch with her. So that is the team uh, for any questions. And I know there will be questions. How do I enter the eCampus? Where do I find this and that? Please write to the email that is there, mmw at itcilo.org. And really don't forget to um, write to us. Um, don't tell us four weeks ahead that you could not find your way to the eCampus, tell us straight away so that you be able to, to follow. Um, this is a certified course. So those of you who uh, managed to participate in the webinars and um, complete most of the uh, learning on the electronic campus will re receive an ITC ILO uh, certificate of participation at the end of this program. That's why I was saying we are monitoring uh, participation. But if you cannot make it in one of the webinars, maybe a quick email to mmw at itcilo.org uh, and we will make sure that you have access to the registration of the webinar. 
I think we gave you a whole lot of information today, <laughs> both in terms of content and in terms of the course. Um, but don't worry, as I said in the beginning, the objective here is not to go into all the details of financing uh, frameworks and financing mechanisms, but to make sure that you as governments and social partners feel a bit more confident in working on those frameworks and working on these with these financing uh, tools and hopefully thereby advancing a little bit more uh, towards our joint decent work objectives. That's it from us today, I think. Thank you so much, Anita Amorim. Thank you so much, Duncan Chando, for your uh, great uh, presentations. Thank you, everybody, for the contributions on the whiteboard, in the chat, uh, your questions. Uh, lovely to have you in this course. Um, have a look at the eCampus. Try to go through the information there and looking forward to seeing you next week, same time, same place. Have a wonderful afternoon and uh, see you soon. Bye bye. Thanks, Linda. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 everybody. Bye. 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 Bye.